Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Game Points episode 178. Weekly we'll get together, we talk about recent gaming news. I'm, as always, your host, Stephen Brown, and joining me today is... I'm David. Tonight, guys, uh, thanks for showing up, by the way, Vince Nitro, Introspect, uh, Nightbot. I see you in there, Nightbot, you little bot, uh -huh. you. Uh, tonight, we are running a day later than normal because we have E3. Of course, the great trade show is upon us. We're going to be breaking down the bigger parts of each E3 conference and what the hell we think about all this. Now, keep in mind, this will not be a comprehensive review of each conference. Just a quick look at each one and what we liked and hated about them. As we go through them, this is, of course, an audience interactive podcast, so I want you to give us your thoughts and feelings about them as we go on. We might not be able to get to everything you guys bring up, but if you want to talk about one thing that we might be glossing over, please feel free to mention that either live at Twitch TV or down in the comments on YouTube below later. David. Yeah. Before we get into any of that, though, I really want to update this one issue that we've been following for a while now because, goddamn. It's it, had to, was... it had to happen right now. Right? Yeah, it had to happen during E3. Week, of all but... the times it could happen. But this is something that I feel like is almost a core tenet of our show. Like, as long as we've been around, there's been this ongoing litigation. Yes. <laughs> uh, we are, of course, talking about the Stardock versus Frungi Games legal bullshit over Star Control. Now, we have actually gotten, we've gotten back and forth this, because I was an old Star Control fan, so I heard when the fighting broke out between uh, Fred Ford and Paul Reach versus Bradwater of Stardock, I was very crestfallen, because I love both these developers, and I love Star Control, and I hated that they were fighting over this. Uh, we even had Brad Wardell on to talk about it uh, a couple months ago, maybe even a year ago at this point. Yeah, it's been and a while. And it sucked. I hated it. And one thing that we said was... Why can't everyone just come together and hammer out something that's nice and everyone gets to do their own thing? Because they both clearly love this franchise. And guess what fucking happened? The exact thing we hoped for. The thing we've been hoping and dreaming and wishing for for two years now, I think. Has it been two? It feels like it's been two years. I don't I'm know pretty it sure it's been, been two, two years. years since we first heard the rumblings of this. Because it was an ongoing story last year. Yeah. We were constantly talking about it. We talked to Brad. We went back and forth. And like, okay... Because I, I think I asked him, if you go and find that episode, I said, is there a situation in which this can somehow be resolved and the fans win, where you're happy, Paul and Fred are happy, and both of your games get made and everyone goes their respective way? And he's like, maybe I, I hope so. Uh, and it's exactly, it's so fantastic this is getting resolved this way. Because exactly that's happening. Both games are still getting made. Uh, Star Control Origins, you know, came out already and the Irkwan Masters game which is the uh spiritual successor to true successor to Star Control 2 yeah, it depends on who you is, talk to it, it does specifically depend on who you talk to <laughs> is still getting made um but part of the breakdown is there's all kinds of cool stuff where Paul is actually going to be helping develop some new alien races yeah. for Star Control Origins to help differentiate it uh the fact that Paul actually has like 30 hours of playtime in Star Control Origins I think says the most he didn't just write him off and say, "Ah, oh, I can't deal with this. I don't want to. I don't want to look at these guys. We're in, we're in litigation, blah blah." He still played the game because he loves the franchise that he helped make. Uh, Star Doc admits that Paul and Fred are the creators. They they own the the rights to it or, or the rights they need to own so that they can make Urcon Masters, and they can they can still put out Star Control one, two, and three, so you can go buy those games and play them. And the funds get split between Star Doc and Paul. It's just. Everything good that could possibly have come of this happened, and I've... the way it happened is fucking hilarious. Yes, so how this ended up happening was, uh, and the, I'm going to link to Paul and Fred's blog in the description down below it's, so you guys it's can worth, read it. It's worth a read. It'll take you it three is. minutes to get through the whole thing pretty quick. Essentially, uh, Paul was sitting back and he started realizing win or lose this lawsuit is going to cost a lot of time a lot of money a lot of resources so even if they win they they will lose yeah it's they, ridiculous he, he actually quotes uh the great film war games starring a young master broderick and um the end result of global thermonuclear war war is that the only way to win is not to play and, and like, that's the, the title of the blog so Paul goes around the lawyers, contacts Brad directly, which any lawyer is going to tell you never fucking do. 
ever. <laughs> and he just straight up called him on this on his on his phone. And he is- calls him and goes, "Okay, I'm here to talk about the lawsuit, but first let's talk about bees because that's th- he was looking for a common ground." Now, something I didn't know. Brad Wadare is an apiarist. He raises bees. And Paul is obsessed with like medieval technology and makes mead. Mead is honey wine. So Paul always wanted to raise bees, never got around to doing it. So literally the conversation starts off with Paul and Brad Wardell talking about how to handle bees. And from there, they had common ground to sort their shit out. In other words, unlike so much of the bullshit you find on the internet where people just scream and mute and block each other and call each other fastest rest SJW, they actually sat down and went, what do we like? What and do we, we have can in go common? from there. Let's start with let's start with this shit, man. You and I like bees. Oh, dude, bees make honey. I like honey. I use it to make I use it to make alcohol. That's rad. We should figure this out. And, and also like part of this adults, part of the they settlement. Figured this out. Part of the settlement involves them trading honey for mead. Like, it is that actually is in, written in the settlement <laughs> itself. It is a binding contract between the two. Fucking amazing. So that means they're friends. Officially. The biggest takeaway from the entire thing is the, the lawsuit's not confidential, by the way, so you're going to be able to look up the details of this online. But the biggest takeaway right here is this paragraph found on Paul and Fred's blog. This is honestly and truly an amicable settlement. Not only are we settling the lawsuit, but we've decided to support each other's development so the fan community gets two great games. Fucking a yes. No money is changing hands. Uh, yep. I'm going to read a couple of highlights on the blog. So no money's changing hands. So it's just it's just two people going, okay, we're cool. The suits are completely dropped on both sides. Uh, to get to the B thing, Brad Wardell is giving Paul, Fred and Paul honey from his hives, and Paul's giving Brad some bottles of his homemade mead. Uh, speaking of which, by the way, uh, Brad, you were on the show once. Fred and Paul, we have been in email correspondence to each other. If you're watching this, I feel that both sides here has aggrieved me as a company by dropping this on E3. So I think the only amicable solution to that is to give me both some of the honey and some of the meat. <laughs> I, I, I will be in contact with you guys. I'm going to try to avoid lawyers here. But I think we can also come to a amicable relationship as well. Dr. Hugo, thank you for showing up. How, uh, and then Brad's also going to give advice to Paul on how not to get stunned when raising bees. Uh, Star Trek is Star Trek. Star Doc is going to create new games of Star Control franchise. Paul and Fred will create new games in the Urquan Masters franchise. So it sounds like the two franchises are officially separating from this point. They're going to they're going to split the universe. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Paul is going to vo- that's volunteered to create new alien races for Origins. Brad yep. is offering to help Fred and Paul with the technology side of things because Star Doc is big on like tech. That's one of the big things they do. A lot of their games are designed around their new tech they develop in house. Uh, Star it's Trek. Just, go ahead. I'm just so excited. I know it's, it's so, like the I'm nicest so way. I'm so over the moon excited, like happy that this finally happened. Star Doc no longer going to be aggressively trademarking everything because yep, remember they're dropping, the, they're dropping all the trademarks yeah. for some of the stuff that they didn't really have claim to because they were going after some alien characters and races and names and stuff that they maybe couldn't really get but they were going for it it anyway. was part of the legal strategy because they're like okay if we're gonna have to do this we have to do this all the way so i get they, had, they, yeah, they had they had the shotgun everything both Legally. sides are recognizing each other's copyrights and will not challenge them in the future this this was all done with prejudice with prejudice is a legal term of saying you can't fucking do this again yep uh they broke down like each individual alien race and character and said okay this is what this is who owns what that apparently they hammered out really hard this is who owns this this is who owns that this is what we own together this is what we own separately star control one two and three are now back on sale on most digital platforms yep and, and paul and fred will be... be split royalties with star dog yeah that's amazing star Duck is still going to be selling the games but paul and fred will be getting royalties and that uh pretty classy yes uh paul and fred have perpetual right to the Urquan masters trademark awesome yep star doc accepts that paul and fred created star control one and two awesome both parties agree that many other skilled people also help contribute that was one of the sticky widgets uh brad on our show said well it wasn't just them that created it was a bunch of other people i felt that was kind of a yeah it's kind of a cheap shot but hey it establishes mm-hmm. that uh their change of a name goes to the precursors to something else and they say that is going to be years off so Whenever they get to it. I, I, it that, that sums it up. Essentially, they're both going, okay, 
we're making our game, you're making our game, and we're going to help each other make our game, which is what we wanted from the beginning. That's, that's I can't... All we wanted is just more star control, and this is the best possible solution yes. because it's the most star control. Yes, I, I am so, so it's happy. It's just funny that it had to happen this way. Yes, I am so happy that this shit got resolved. Uh, I am still expecting my honey and mead for the inconvenience that both parties have put me Ain't through happen, by bro. dropping this on E3 week. Uh, and yeah, so that hopefully sums, wraps it all up. We're done. I just want to get them on the show so I can ask when their games are coming to Switch. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, uh, I, I will try reaching out to all parties involved and see if we can't do a little interview about the uh, the celebrations that are rightfully... And of course they'll talk us. to us. We're wicked famous. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sure we are. Yeah, dude. Uh, so, let us know what you guys think down in the comments below or live here at Twitch TV about this whole thing. I, I, I still can't. I am flabbergasted at how Ooh, good one amicable everything here is because lawsuits don't end like this. They actually went around both their lawyers because their lawyer isn't thinking, how do I resolve this with... In the most nice way. The lawyer's is, job is to go, how do I defeat the enemy? Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> so, um, although I think to sum this up and to get them to, to move along, the big takeaway for me, though, is that this single story was the most surprising thing of the world. Yes. For me. Same here. Uh, and, and not that um, this isn't all that surprising, but it has been kind of a... Eh, E3. It's, it's a show. I'm, I'm remarkably whelmed. Neither uh, under or over. <laughs> it just is. It, it is neutral in my book. It wasn't the worst. It wasn't the best. But let's go ahead. But and we are on that E3 weird details. precipice of next gen. So it's, let's, it's the uh, burn through season. It's, it's that point where all the companies have to get rid of all of their older shit that they've been holding on to while not revealing all the new shit that's about to come out. So what yep. you, they're kind of, I don't want to say scraping the bottom of the barrel, but they're certainly stretching to have things to show, which is why I think so many of them pulled out this year. Yep. Uh, but let's, let's go through it. Now we're actually going to run through it backwards. So from freshest to oldest in terms of stories, because it's our show and that's the way we want to do it. Right. So we're going to start with Nintendo, uh, who had their Nintendo direct this morning. Um, because they weren't actually at E3. They do their own thing. They have a video, they show up a day late, which is why we are also a day late. Yes. And, um, let's, let's talk about some stuff. Yeah, it you, wasn't bad. Think? Uh, one thing I do want to mention, if it's not your chat, says hype is for suckers who pre-order No Man's Sky. And that's, that's, that, that, I mean, he's saying that as a joke in chat, but that is something that I, I always want to stress. Everything that you see here at E3 is designed to hype you up. Take yeah, they want you to spend money. Everything. Even my favorite games that I saw that I'm hyped for, you know, that look amazing, take with a grain of salt. I'm not saying be a jaded, cynical asshole. I am. Be a jaded, cynical asshole. And then use video games to bring you to a level area where you can still enjoy your life. <laughs> but but let's let's not uh, throw money blindly at product that we haven't even seen gameplay of in some cases. So just keep that in mind. A lot of what you saw at E3 are just CG trailers for games. We don't even know what they are. Ubisoft is particularly gu agreed, uh, guilty of this. And we'll talk about that when we get to them. So, back to Nintendo. Nintendo, they had a direct. It was this morning. What yes. did you think? Uh, it's about forty minutes, and it wasn't bad. It, uh, this is going to sound weird, but I think Nintendo might have had the best showing of all the major people that that arrived for E three this year. And that's not necessarily because Nintendo blew me away. It's just they had the most stuff that made me go, "Oh, okay, I didn't know that was coming." They they surprised me the most. Because everything either got leaked or was just updates to already existing games. Okay. And a lot of stuff here was just updates to existing games, too. But but at least they had some new tidbits. So let's just go ahead and break down some of the bigger stuff that we see. Once again, this isn't a comprehensive review of each conference. Just some of the big stuff. So we'll miss things. 
either deliberately or because I forgot. But let's start God off. God damn, you're buttering this up a lot, man. We got a lot of shit to get through. Just start fucking talking about <laughs> it. <laughs> Nintendo. Hey, but guess first, what? We got new Smash Brothers DLC. The DLC characters, <laughs> uh, the dra- the hero from Dragon Quest in all of his forms, and Banjo Kazooie. Hey, dude, I did like that Banjo Kazooie reveal because it looked like Banjo oh, Kazooie, and then, and then it turns out it was the fucking dog from Duck Hunt with the duck on his shoulder, and then that was some bullshit, and then Banjo Kazooie jumped out. Yeah, it's great. Nintendo's Terrific. a troll, and they've trolled before. It's a good troll. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Luigi's Mansion Three looks adorable. Eight player co op. Very curious to see how that works out. Have you ever played Luigi's Mansion? Um, no. See, I never played it either. I wanted to play the second one because I had a 3DS at the time. Then instead, I didn't. <laughs> I played Monster Hunter. Yeah, it was. I, remember, I have no regrets. I remember when GameCube came out and I saw Luigi's Mansion, and I I was younger. And I remember looking at it and going, what baby-ass baby game is this? And said, fuck Luigi's Mansion. I want no part of it. I feel like oh, that okay. was a mistake. I feel like I should have played it. Because it Probably really solid, is beloved man. by a lot of people. True. How about uh, Dark Crystal Age of Resistant Tactics? Legitimately surprising. I have no interest in it. It does, of course, tie in with the Netflix series coming out later this year. Uh, cool. It's a tactics game. I do love tactics game, but something... I was never a big Dark Crystal fan. I know that, that that's kind of blasphemous from someone who even grew up in the 80s and loves things like Labyrinth, but the Dark Crystal specifically, I always watched and kind of went, eh, okay, it has some good stuff in it, but it's not great. People like it, other people don't like it, like most IPs. But um, let's talk about definitely the absolute 100% best Zelda-related announcement at the show. Yes. Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening. Now this gameplay. We knew this coming was coming out September coming out September 20th of this year. Did not know it was going to be this year. Game looks Fuck amazing. Yeah. I'm so so excited for Link's Awakening because Super that's good. a good damn game. Yeah. And it looks adorable and the music sounds great and I just it is a proper Zelda game. Yes. Now I want to take a moment and specifically address this goddamn dungeon creator that's coming with this. I want to get way deep into this goddamn thing, and I'm very upset that I don't have, like, a five-minute trailer of that alone. Because I really, really, really want to see what we can do with that dungeon creator. Like, because I see this, not, I don't see this as, oh, here's a cute little feature we're throwing in this game. What I see this is a test bed for Zelda Maker. Oh, dude. And the band of, like, Mario Maker. That'd be fun. Uh, Introspecting Chat says they've never been into Zelda, but Link's Awakening looks awesome. Yeah, uh, Link's Awakening is going to play like a classic Zelda game. It is going to play like the old Nintendo and Super Nintendo Zeldas, not like the, the 3D Zeldas, which we will address later in this topic. Uh, moving on to the next, we have Trials of Mana, which is a full remake of Secret of Mana 3. Eh, I was never a big Mana guy. I remember playing Secret of Mana heavily back Wasn't on Wasn't Secret Nintendo of Mana days. 3 not out in the U.S., so this is the first West Coast Correct. release? Or I want to Western say... Western release, not West Coast. That's a ridiculous statement. <laughs> I want to say yes, but I am not 100% certain on that. Uh, because, as I was saying, I'm, I'm not a big Mana guy. I was never big into the Secret of Mana games. The, the, the first one I played a lot, but it was just never a franchise that held a special place in my heart. Well, um, it can, because you can also get the collection of Mana, which has Final Fantasy Adventure, which, yes, it was a Secret of Mana game that was rebranded to be popular, because Final Fantasy was popular, and Secret of Mana, no one knew what the fuck it was. Nope. Uh, and then Secret of Mana, right? Yeah, yep. And then Secret of Mana, Secret of Mana 3? Or did Secret of Mana, Secret of Mana come out before the Final Fantasy Adventure game? I, I think Final Fantasy Adventure came out f- first, but what I think this is, I believe Final Fantasy Adventure is a Secret of Mana spinoff? Because there are Final Fantasy related things in it. I want to say there was like Chocobos and stuff in there. Mm. Uh, and then you have Secret of Mana and Secret of Mana Three. Whatever happened? I, I just I thought don't... it was like I thought it was like the Mario Brothers Two of the Final Fantasy universe. Uh, where it's technically a game in the series, it's meant to but be it's more basically se- another game. It's meant to be more of a Secret of Mana game than a Final Fantasy game. But there are elements from Final Fantasy in it. If I recall correctly, we're literally talking about a game that's like 30 years old, and I have not played it in 30 years. Also, Vince calling out Final Fantasy uh, Mystic Quest. Yeah, dude. Now, Final Fantasy Mystic Quest was not a Final Fantasy game, if I recall. I, I, hold on. I have to look this up now. Give me one sec. Fill time. Fill time. 
So the cool thing about the collection of mana is the fact that this was one of the out now oh, whoa, whoa, games. Because, you know, that shit's got to happen. Got to have games come out right this second. So important. You got you to gotta, you gotta turn down the volume there, son. No, I am trying to get everyone excited about something that happened this morning. It's much later than that, and I'm doing my best. No, so Final Fantasy Mystic Quest was actually a Final Fantasy game. It was just meant to be a spinoff. I wasn't sure if it was another game they just slapped a Final Fantasy name on or not, but no, it was originally designed as a Final Fantasy game. Salty Frank, welcome to the chat. Appreciate having you here. Cool. I actually might get this collection of Mana game. I don't necessarily have faith in the Secret of Mana 3 remake, because they remade Secret I of Mana. I want it. They remade Secret of Mana. I didn't jive on that, but this collection looks solid. Next mm -hmm. up, one of the biggest surprises I saw. I, I don't know if this was being teased earlier or not, but I had no idea this was coming. The fucking Witcher 3 coming, a complete edition on Switch this year. Now, see, I'd heard tons and tons of rumors about this to where it was all but confirmed in my head, but then I'm still looking at it and going, how the fuck is that? Yeah, I have no idea huge, how that game works. And that game made my computer fry when I tried to run. And They I know have to be computer, cutting something. My computer now is much better than it was, but even my old computer is way the hell better than a Switch. Yeah, they uh, gotta be cutting something. I just don't know what. But I want to see it comes out 2019. I actually might buy this game again just to have it on the Switch. Because this is one of those games that's a play, for me, it's fucking 200 hours on the go. And it just it's just, just going to be there. Uh, so this might be something I actually be buying on the Switch. I'm not 100% positive yet. Yep. Next. Um, Fire Emblem Three Houses was dated for July 26th of this year. Super so excited, excited for that. They showed a little trailer for it. I'm a big Fire Emblem fan. I know that a lot of the Fire Emblem faithful seem to be down on this game a little bit. I don't get why. I, I look at it and go, holy shit, this looks amazing. I love, love, love Fire Emblem games. So I'm really looking forward to this. There you go. No More Heroes 3. Same Bose Luigi's That's... Mansion for me. Never played a No More, no More Heroes game. So I'm, I'm very out in the wilderness on this. Uh, people like those games. They seem fun. Uh, other games people like are Contra and Contra Rogue Corps. <laughs> the Contra Rogue Corps is coming. Yes, I know. I, I, I know you know how to pronounce that word, right? Contra Rogue Corps. Way more like hard than I expect, but this is one of the core entry. If you recall, the last core entry they did was uh, there, there was like hardcore. This has always been like they're more extreme like bad dude style of 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 mockery it's kind of like a i don't want to say a parody of contra because it's not really making fun of contra but it's not as dark or grim as contra is okay contra is a fun game looks cool uh the contra anniversary collection i believe also released today i'm not positive on that oh yeah though. there's a whole bunch of contra in there if you need more contra in your yeah probably if you like contra also. Another major surprise, which is one of the things where I say Nintendo might have won the C3 for me, is fucking Panzer Dragoon getting remade. That is actually really cool. Remake of the 1995 original game that was on uh, Saturn, I believe. Yep. Yeah, dude, that's a straight Sega game coming to Nintendo. This is one of those things I hope is a test bed and accessible one so we can get Panzer Dragoon 2. However, for those thinking that we might get Panzer Dragoon Saga... Don't hold didn't, your breath. Didn't, didn't Microsoft fund it? Or no, it? Uh, that's Orda. Panzer Dragoon Saga was an RPG set in the Panzer Dragoon universe, and apparently Sega has said that they've lost the source code to that game. So that game is lost. That happens all the time. I, I, I went on a tangent about this on my appearance on Kind of Funny Games about source code preservation and why it's important to have a digital library of Congress, as it were, that maintains all this shit. And this is one of the reasons why. Because unless Sega decides to put the time and effort into completely recreating that game from the original, that game, for all intents and purposes, is dead. And when the last physical media of that game goes bye-bye, that game no longer exists. Really sucks. It does. Um, An Animal Crossing New Horizons did get pushed back to March 20th, 2020. Um, it's, a little you know, surprising. I thought Nintendo, because Nintendo doesn't have a major, major release this winter that I can think of. They have Luigi's Mansion 3, yes, but they, they don't have a... Luigi's Mansion is an Animal Crossing. It's it's not in that category. It's, it's Luigi's Mansion is like a B-plus tier, Animal Crossing is A tier. Yeah, Animal Crossing's a big deal. You know, a lot of people can play that. But you start with a single tent, you end up making a whole city. It's got four-player local co-op, eight-player online. It's an Animal Crossing game. You're going to be on play on your Switch, and you can play it in March. 
This uh, might be some. This might be the first game that actually gets me into Animal Crossing, by the way, because I like the idea of building up from. You're on a desert island, building up from nothing. I like that starting premise. The only time I played Animal Crossing was just to collect the old school any on like the game, and then they made a virtual console, and I had no reason to play Animal. I don't really like shake trees that much. It's, it's just not, it's not your thing. Fair enough. Um, and then finally we got a. Uh, reveal trailer i guess we got i no no joke the music started for the next segment and my brain immediately went to fucking bracket the first like three notes yes the first like three notes of the song they played reminded me of the opening to like dragon guard 2 i was like wait what are they like re-releasing that shit nope instead it was a teaser and that's all i'll call it it's not a trailer uh, for a actual sequel to Breath of the Wild, because they did say a Breath of the Wild sequel is in the works. It is not DLC. Uh, the art style looks identical, and please, dear God, let's hope they bother to make it a Zelda game time. Yeah, I mean, I've gone off on my rant about Breath of the Wild more than once about how, yes, it looks pretty. It's a cool idea, but in the end, I it's go a big... over that. I go on that rant constantly. Yeah, it's Breath a big empty wild. world with lame dungeons and weapon that degradation. Would have sold a hundred copies if it was called anything else. Yeah, it the name Zelda carried it, that game. Yeah. Uh, uh, if Breath of the Master Wild Sword 2... can break, okay? Fuck yeah, it. that's fucked up. If Full Breath stop. of the Wild just completely ditches weapon degradation, that would immediately improve that game by twice in my head. Hell yeah. And give me I some proper dungeons hate and, and weapon not, degradation. Like, weird, almost infinite feeling puzzles. I'm going to do another puzzle room. I'm going to do another puzzle room. I'm going to do Puzzle rooms are what got me to stop playing Assassin's Creed 2. No joke. Doing the puzzle rooms in Assassin's Creed 2 made me put that game down, and I did not play another Assassin's Creed game until Origin. Yeah, it's... it's... Every game in the middle I skipped because I was like, these games are too fucking repetitive. I can't stand this. And they're all variations of the same few things. Mm Mm-hmm. And it's just, no, and, I, I'm not... And, and don't get me wrong, people do fucking awesome shit in Breath of the Wild. Yeah. And I know people have tons of fun with it. And I like it's puzzle like, games, too. Portal, uh, Talos Principle. But I don't want my systems, puzzle game... Like, Good. I just don't I just don't want that to be my Zelda game. Yeah, I, I don't either. And I hated Breath of the Wild because of that. That said, I am thinking about actually doing a playthrough of Breath of the Wild again. Just to kind of... my I know what I'm going into now. See it with fresh eyes. Kind of get into it. Hilarious. But Breath of the Wild 2 has me mildly anticipating it though because it has a significantly darker tone based on that trailer alone yep although we should move on because we're halfway into the show and we're fifth of the way into the, sh- into the conference <laughs> so let's talk about square enix which was monday night's conference um they opened up with the final fantasy 7 remake uh it is coming out march 3rd 2020. no it's not no wait a minute no way no the midgar section of final fantasy 7 remake is coming out march 3rd 2020 and it's going to be on two fucking blu-ray discs wait hold on david i thought the midgar part was like the first hour of the game where you just kind of meet Arius and then you leave and then you start questing and then you have to go get the party oh no friends midgar is the entirety of this fucking thing because they're fleshing it out they're making it more story i'm good with that to be the most episodic game of all time (laughs) And of course, it already has a first class premium edition set to $329.99 because they are going to milk you fucking dry so. over Final Fantasy VII. These games will be coming out as much as we're going to get Avatar sequel. Just every other year, there's another fucking Final Fantasy VII. So, a couple things about this. One, no way in hell it makes that March 3rd date. I fucking believe it when I see it. I- Oh, dude, Fucking of course it will. I guarantee you this is going to get be... delayed by at least another month or two. It will absolutely come out March 3rd because it's just Midgar. This game is going to be a 12-hour long action game. That's the next topic I want to bring up. Uh, are they just going to make a 12-hour over spread over two discs? Or is this going to be a full RPG and they just really expanded out what happens in Midgar? Because You don't, my... even, get all... you don't in... even get all the God. characters in Midgar. In my brain... You don't even run out to party. In my brain, the way they're doing this is that they're going to expand Midgar out significantly. And you will get the entire party in Midgar. 
because they're completely rewriting things, it looks like. Remember on that trailer, you see Aerith getting attacked by weird ghost shadow things like they came from that movie. I mean, ghost. I know they're fleshing it out, and, like, the, the the Avalanche crew talks way more, like, in the trailer than they did in the entirety of the original game and, and yada yada. It's just, I don't know, it feels needless. My brain but tells it me. It could be though. amazing. It's it's built for a new audience, new, built for a new generation, and it makes sense that they wouldn't do a shot for shot remake of Final Fantasy VII. And I'm fine with that they're, if they're rebuilding it from the ground up. So that's cool. Um, the combat looks fun. Strong shades of Final Fantasy XV there, just a little bit more improved. Uh, my brain is telling me that this first game is going to be one percent Midgard, and it's going to be thirty hours. The next game will be everything after Midgard, also over thirty hours, but compressed. They're going to take plot elements from the second half of Final Fantasy, this, this and is put them be, into the first. This is going to be like the first third of disc one, and then the next game is going to be like disc, like the second half of disc one and disc two. And, yeah, so and what's, disc three, like, let's relate this to the Peter Jackson Lord because of the Rings they already Because they already said that there is going to be uh, at least two more of these. Did they say there's going to be at least two more of these? Yes. Okay, so I didn't hear that. I read, I read that earlier today, and I mean, of course, this is it's e3 time so there's speculation abound but i'm fairly certain that there was an interview trilogy makes sense where they were going to try and release final fantasy 7 as a trilogy yeah it feels like the peter jackson lord of the rings films where the first part of midgar here is him doing the hobbit where he takes one book and expands it out over three movies and it's just boring as fuck and then the last two discs are going to be three whole books worth of shit combined into two movies yeah well, the metaphor well, gets a little fuzzy as it goes on but i think you know what i'm talking about yeah yeah i get it so yeah, that's coming. No way in hell it's March 3rd, though. Not only do I have a prediction writing on it, I just don't have faith that Square Enix can deliver anything on time. That's hilarious. Also, how about that $330 edition that's got a cloud riding a motorcycle? Uh, I that. guarantee you it's sold out. That is going okay. to sell out almost immediately. You that's... got it. Well, it's also a play arts figure. Those yeah, are that statue different. is amazing, and it is play arts. So they make fucking high-quality shit. This isn't like the toy plasma cutter from dead space everything 2 everything we've seen is from the first hour of final fantasy that 7. really bothers me i'm really afraid that we're going to get this game spread across two blu-rays and it's only like four hours long yeah. i'm really afraid that might happen I'm, I'm spooked um also shown off at square enix we had outriders which is the new game from the people can fly team which is the crew that made bullet storm amazingly kind of underrated an game there, uh, I, I think Blue Storm is hilarious, but there was an awkward moment where the guy went out and he's like, hey, Bullet Storm fans! And there's like some mild applause, and then there was like silence for a second. Hey, let's, that, let's, let's, look, let's look at this thing. It's a sci-fi one to three player drop in, drop out co-op shooter. And one of the big ongoing themes of the show is just, it's it's the cinematic game reveal. Like, it feels like an old E3. We saw yeah. very little gameplay from anything. And that always makes me worried, because are all these games even coming out this gen? Or are they just showing us CG because they don't want to talk about it yet? That That's what I was talking about earlier. We got a lot of CG trailers, very little gameplay, so I really don't know what Outriders is really going to be about. Nope. But maybe it's awesome. Yeah. You had Oninaki shown off. That's Tokyo RPG's Factory's next game. Those are the guys that made I Am Satsuna, which is... Uh, it's, it's our uh, i didn't care too much for and lost fear another game I, I don't like what this company does but they do make old school rpgs of a tradition of the super style stuff that's coming august they're 22nd. called tokyo rpg factory yeah it's about as, it, it's gonna tell you rpgs <laughs> <laughs> you don't like that shit it's not gonna work for you then who I talked about the only thing that i gave two shits about for their entire conference let's be real they are finally remastering Final Fantasy VIII. I'm so excited about this. I swear to God, I thought that they had lost the Gold Master. Somebody, like some intern from 1999, found a fucking USB or a, or a, or a zip disk or some shit in his old laptop that had Final Fantasy VIII, and he called Square and said, hey, did you guys need this? And they said, oh, yeah, okay, let's remake that. Because that remaster looks really... The, the I need to take a deeper dive into this, but I'm pretty sure they've actually completely redone some character models because it's not yes. just an no, HD high-res version. A, no, if you look at some of the comparison shots, they completely redid the some of the graphics. Yeah, so I'm really excited for this, and one of the best se sequences ever in a Final Fantasy. Multiple of the best sequences in Final Fantasy are in this game. Two of them I can think of is one, the assassination on the sorceress scene, which is fucking an amazing 10-minute sequence. And, of course, the Battle of the Two Gardens, which is one of the greatest role-playing moments I've ever seen in video games to date. Oh, yeah. 
I mean, you have people launching jet motorcycles across the sky at each other. Uh, I also really, really enjoy the fact that there's an antagonist in that game that straight up kills one of your summons. Yes. Uh, that shit Cypher happens. murders the shit out of Odin that, if you play you know, it right. Because if you get Odin, he shows up and randomly kills enemies. If you have him during that boss fight, he shows up, kills Cypher. Except for, spoiler alert, he does not win. And no. Cypher just fucking murks him. And that shit's... Not enough Cypher uh, in that game. I really like Cypher. So, hey, dude. Me, that, move... me and that guy have the same birthday. Oh, really? I didn't know that's, that. That's canonical. Let's move on to the last thing that Square showed, and that's this Avengers game, finally. Hey! It's mm -hmm. gonna live forever. It is their own version of Destiny. It, for the love of God, should not be using the exact lineup of Avengers that we just watched in the Marvel Cinematic Universe sans fucking Hawkeye. Well, I get no one gives a shit about Hawkeye. We've all seen RDJ play Iron Man for the last 10 years. We've seen Chris Evans play Captain America for the last nine years. We've seen Chris Hemsworth play Thor for the last nine years. Pick different Avengers. <laughs> What the fuck? Are, I mean, okay, yes. You have Nolan North, you have Troy Baker. That's cool. Uh, it's it's the, it's the anime why? who's who cast, right? So it's Nolan North, Troy Baker, Travis Willingham, and Laura Bailey, who have... No, they, it's... They're, they're big, awesome. big video game voice actors. That's amazing. But why? 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 And they all, after, they're all off-looking, too. After Endgame, after the Infinity War saga that was 22 movies and 10 years of our lives. But guess what? The people that you're trying to get this game out to are people that like Marvel. People like Marvel have been, like, waist deep in Marvel for a decade. And you're using the same characters with different voices and different, like, it just it feels, feels off. It feels weird. So weird. And because it doesn't help that they designed are... them to look kind of like what, like, for example, Robert uh, Iron Man, Tony Stark looks a little bit, he looks like evil Robert Downey Jr. He looks like Robert Downey Jr. stunt double. Uh, Ca Ca Captain America looks shot, like, like uh, Chris Pine stunt double. They all look like they're stunt doubles, right? And it, it's it's just different enough to kind of trigger the uncanny valley re resemblance to them. I'm just like uh, something about this doesn't look right. There's just there's, there's so many Avengers, and it, it's just weird that they would choose that specific lineup. And the game could be awesome. I mean, it does look kind of fun seeing Hulk run around and jump over stuff, but. I mean, you could have given a She-Hulk. She gets no love. So let's get that action going. Well, they might as the game grows older, because as was apparently announced, this is going to be a games-as-a-service type game, which immediately killed any and all interest I had in playing the Avengers. Yeah, it's going to have no loot boxes. They said that during the reveal. Uh, yes, but also comes with free updates, which means this game is going to be microtransactioned all to fucking hell. You're going to have to probably pay for new characters, new uh, costumes, all kinds of stuff like that. They... Congratulations, said no loot boxes. You're a decent fucking human being. I'm not going to pat you on the back for not being a raging fucking asshole. But I want... The, the, when What they didn't say is more important than what they said because they did not tell you how they're going to monetize this. They did not tell you how their updates are really going to roll out. That shit's where they're going to get you. So I have no faith in this game being any good. Also, Disco, I would also play a Four Horsemen. A Marvel Four Horsemen game? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Could, could definitely be good. Anyways, let us know what you think about that Avengers game down at the bottom below. I know we didn't touch on it too long, but we do have to move through things. I just have... I have less faith in that game. That The trailer was anti-hype to me. I watched I was like, okay, there's no real gameplay. What they are showing, if it's representative gameplay, looks weird. Your weird games as a service declaration without really declaring a games as a service but saying hey there's no loot boxes but that you don't preface a game saying no loot boxes without there being other forms of microtransactions in it tell me what those are but they didn't it just this is this is not good uh, all right really, enough really enough really you don't it. like avengers let's talk ubisoft okay we're gonna plow through this real quick watch uh, ubisoft i think was the most lacking conference there was a couple things that are interesting to me but god damn why were they ever taking a tv show anyway let's get into it <laughs> Watch Dogs Legion looks better than I thought it was going to. Uh, they actually sold me on the idea of this play as any NPC thing working. However, I want to see it working in the wild. Because I unless they spent 
millions of dollars recording multiple different lines of dialogue, animation, and styles that most people won't whoa, ever whoa, whoa. see. By your own admittance, voice acting is cheap as fuck because we don't need professional voice actors. You could just ask any old YouTuber and they'll do it pro bono because they want to get their That's true. Done. That's also not what Ubisoft would do. <laughs> just... <laughs> I'm just saying, you have said that on this show. So I have. I do need I to call that shit have. out. They could However, have just called a bunch of YouTubers and got some cheap-ass voice acting. I don't think that's what they did. Who knows? I can almost guarantee you that's not what they did. So unless uh, yeah. there is a massive repository of dialogue and animation just stored in this game that most people will never see, you're going to see the fucking same shit over and over and over again. So it's going to be like 15 different people or 15 different character archetypes spread over thousands of different people or something like that. So I, I, I'm afraid that's what we're going to get. However, they might have figured out a way around that. We won't know until we actually see it. Uh, the game's definitely more in tone with Watch Dogs 1 than Watch Dogs 2. Watch Dogs 2 was very much a, hey, we're a bunch of hackers. We're Johnny Lee Miller and Zero Cool hacking the Gibson. Whereas Watch Dog 1 was like, I'm Adrian Pierce. I'm here to kill the people that murdered my family. This is definitely more three than two, or one than two. All right. Um... Then we had that weird. Okay, the dude from Always Sunny came out. And yeah, Rob. Started... Rob Mac. McKin... Mac from Always Sunny. I can't remember his name. Rob McKinnelbricks. Something. Anyway, McKinnelbricks. Uh, to show off Mythic Quest Raven's Blood or Raven's Baggage or Raven's Butthole or whatever the fuck it's called, which is a TV show that's based on game development where he plays the creative director of a studio who's full of himself. And they showed a teaser where there was like a game teaser, but then it went into just like this self jerk about the guy that made the game, which was pretty funny. And it, I mean, it could be good. The people behind it are fucking hilarious because Always Sunny's a pretty. It funny just show. looks like the cheap game version of Silicon Valley. I mean, the only the the thing is, is I was like, oh, dude, this could be fun. I'd probably watch this. And he's like, exclusive to Apple TV. I will never see this show. Yeah, I will never hear of this that, show. I was like, I don't care. This show is going straight to the garbage who the fuck gives a shit about apple TV? the same Seriously? people who would buy a thousand dollar tv stand from apple god damn those people are idiots um we also got how about tom clancy's elite squad i'm so salty on this god damn it <laughs> oh this pissed me off so they're elite as fuck bro it looks like a strategy game okay cool it's kind of like their version of playstation battle star all stars where they just take all the random tom clancy characters that have popped up in the various games and put them in a strategy game including sam fisher which means ubisoft, which means ubisoft hasn't forgot he exists but there was no mention they of just, a new splitter cell just, game they just specifically hate you and the things you love this is like fucking when uh blizzard announced diablo immortal to me it's like, I oh, saw yeah. that, and I wanted to, like, ask if this was an early April Fool's joke, or a late April Fool's joke. Great. I hope it does uh, well. The game actually does look kind of fun, but still, it's just like, really, guys? How about more Just Dance? Just Dance 2020, or fucking okay. Just Dance Hi Hindsight Edition? Don't care about that. What I care about is that they're making a copy of this for the Wii. Fuck yeah, they are, because the Just Dance series are the number one selling Wii games for the last six years. They're the only selling Wii games for the past yeah, six 2018, years. 2018 Wii sales, if you look at the games sold, go in reverse order Just Dance games. It's so like 2019 is the number one selling Wii game from last year. Then 2018, then 2017, then 2016, and then I don't remember what It that doesn't is. count, though, when you're the only company making games for the fucking Wii still. Yeah, but... What I want to know Wii. is how many copies of it sell on the Wii. They're probably selling to every single retirement community, old folks home, and senior care center in America because the Wii is still a huge fucking deal for mobility and for keeping people engaged. The Wii is one of the greatest inventions of the last fucking 20 years. No one just wants to admit. <laughs> I, I won't. I sure as hell won't. I think it was a fad. I absolutely think the Wii was a fad, but that's something you we can, can get into You can later. absolutely 100% believe that it's a fad, but the big deal is is that there are like shit tons of older folks that have mobility issues or hand issues and all kinds of shit, and they can play video games and stay active and stay involved because Wii games can... All right. And that's fucking cool. So I actually, surprisingly, am not mad at Ubisoft for still making Justice. Oh, I'm not it's mad not at them. It's not for me. I have no reason to even look at it, but... 
good on don't, you, bros. Don't get me wrong. I'm not mad at them. I'm just shocked that they're still making Wii games. Why not? Um, the Wii has shit. officially outlived the Vita. Uh, yeah. I think it's going on 12 years, 13 years of updates. Lots of updates for games, by the way. For Honor Rainbow Six Division 2, all getting updates. And then we wrap up with Gods and Monsters. Now, what do you think about this? Because I'm actually really intrigued in what this could be. Um, Gods and Monsters looks like if they mix Breath of the Wild with like uh Assassin's Creed Odyssey. That's the first thing I thought. Breath of the Wild with Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Or well, not, not Breath Assassin's of the Wild. Uh, I, I, saw, I thought uh, Wind Waker crossed with Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Well, because it's made from the Assassin's Creed Odyssey team. Okay. They are making it. They are putting this game out. And it's... What the fuck is it? Norse mythology? Greek. Greek mythology. I couldn't... Well, I didn't remember. Uh, and it could be really damn fun. I'm actually really curious. This is coming February 25th, 2020. I'm shocked we did not see more for a game that's less than a year away. Mm, well, they've also been working on it since Odyssey came out. So it's probably only six months in development. Yeah, that means they only have like another six months to finish, polish it off and get it ready. They'll do fine. They've got that Ubisoft magic or whatever the fuck it's called. Now, are we sure it's people. Odyssey, the Odyssey team, or is it the Origins team? No, it's the Odyssey. Okay. Yeah, you can look it up. It's the Odyssey. Fair enough. Yeah, I, I'm intrigued by this. I want to see more. I'm just shocked we didn't get more for a game that's less than a year away. Yep. Um. Then we can go all the way back to Sunday night. Late o'clock uh, is around the time that Devolver does whatever Devolver does. Um, this is the third time they've had a non-show show during E3, and they decided to do a Direct this year, which is pretty terrific. Devolver Direct in the style of all the other Devolver shows. Essentially, if you like Adult Swim style humor, you're going to like the Devolver stuff. If you hate Adult Swim, you're going to fucking hate for Devolver stuff. There's no in-between. <laughs> I thought it was more... Devolver Direct in the style of Clockwork Orange, the way they're fucking doing that shit. <laughs> uh, it, it is meant to they, be satirical. They, they tapped, they tapped directly into Nina's fucking brain. Yeah, and, and Nina we right. trust. And Nina we trust. Anyway, bunch of bunch of Devolver stuff. They actually do have real announcements at this thing, though. Yep. First Fall of all, guys the is Fall a game. Guys. Go ahead. Uh, Fall Guys is a game. It looks like you have a shit ton of people that you're trying to set through obstacles, and they slowly die, and you try and get them to figure out how to make their way through. It feels it, like feels like lemmings but now you remember wipe that that real life game show wipeout yes this is what this reminds me of just with 100 people most extreme challenge yeah that um, too exciting announcement enter the gungeon house of the gun dead is a straight up fucking arcade cabinet yes in the style of house of the dead arcade cabinets looks fucking amazing by the way i want one but i don't have the five grand to buy one yep i will go to the arcade to play that you got the devolver bootleg edition which is possibly the funniest fucking thing i've ever seen devolver bootlegged all their own games classics you can own classics such as enter the gun dungeon hotline milwaukee ape out jr super absolver mini turbo fighting championship shooty boots catsylvania piku biku ball stars and luft rousers six instead of luft rousers yeah all making all ripping off their own games and they you can buy the whole thing on steam first. yeah uh no 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 sir you buy the downloader on Steam. Oh, that's right. It's so fucking amazing. <laughs> oh, Devolver. Uh, then we take a look at Carry On, which looks fucking awesome, by the way. I played this game a little while back in Alpha. Uh, it was either this year at the Indie Mix or the year before at the Indie Mix. I'm, I'm, it's really cool because you play the monster eating people. Uh, yeah. Introspective chat brings up the fact that the Devolver Bootleg Edition is also 1% off on sale. Oh, fuck One yeah. penny. I can't wait. I'll have to download that immediately. Um, and then uh, finally, I think the most exciting thing for me at the Devolver show, and one of the most exciting things of the whole three, if we're being real, uh, the Messenger Picnic Panic, free DLC hitting the Messenger uh, later this. Is it free DLC? Pretty sure they said it's uh, free. Okay, free I, I did not hear people that. People that own it, much like the uh, Hollow Knight crew, the people that make the Messenger are fucking awesome. Yeah, those guys are amazing. The Messenger is an amazing game. If and the soundtrack is awesome, I don't give a shit if you don't like the Genesis sound chip. You can eat a dick. The soundtrack is amazing. If this DLC is additional story content set after the game, I will play through it on stream. If it is interwoven throughout the game, I'm probably not going to touch it because I don't have a need to play through the messenger again. That's Even fair. to see you have to start stuff. it over. That's too much worth. Yeah, exactly. All right, let's talk about Bethesda. Okay, 
I guess. Let's talk about um, Ghostwire Ghost Tokyo. Tokyo. Now, someone in chat mentioned this looks awesome. Introspect said this looks awesome. Looks really cool. I have no idea what the fuck it is. A bunch of people get raptured, and then you fight ghosts. Yeah, but it's from the same people that made... Uh, Evil Within. Tango. Evil Within. So it's Tango. Tango, Tango Studios? Yeah, or Evil Softworks Within or two. something. Tango Softworks. That sounds good. I have, I have faith that they'll do good. Also, yep. the most adorable person at E3... Goes not to Keanu Reeves, but the uh, the lovely little lady rolled out. Her name is forgetting off the top of my head, but she was super just energetic to be there. And I was like, that is what we need more of at E3. She was super jazzed, and she was not a like white collar CEO. Yeah, she's like a she's the creative director of the game or the lead she's, producer. She's the or... head of a studio of fourteen people. So yeah, she's yeah, just a she, she's the person, person that's actually making this, if I recall. Yep. So uh, go her. Got, God, I wish I could remember on... her name. It starts with an I. I'm not going to try and get it. Anyway, Elder Scrolls Online is getting new shit. Elder Scrolls Blade is getting new shit for whatever fucking reason. Rage 2 is still a game that exists. And Fallout 76 is getting NPCs. Who the fuck knew that people liked Fallout when it had some goddamn story in it? Fuck that. That's right. All of the actual Fallout fans, but apparently not Bethesda. Um, here's hoping that at some point later this year that game also works. Right. That would be fucking awesome. I mean, they I showed some. Really... <laughs> I, I'm just really so done with Fallout 76. I, I was hoping that to see like some something from it, and when they just went, now it might be as good as a basic release Fallout. I just kind of went, okay, I'm fucking done. I'm out. They showed more of Wolfenstein Youngblood and Doom Eternal sold on both those games, and they also teased Deathloop. Now Deathloop is from the studio that brought you Prey and Dishonored, two games I really love, and it's this weird two assassins trying to kill each other over and over again in this time loop. Cool idea. It's like, it's like Groundhog Day, except for you're trying to murder some specific person. Yeah. Cool idea, but much like Ghostwire Tokyo, no fucking gameplay at all. Yep. It's just two CGI We don't even trailers. know what system is coming out. Like, is it coming out this console generation or next? Do, 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 do. Yeah. And, and, of course, introspect. Yeah, they didn't mention Starfield or the next Elder Scrolls because they, they revealed both of those games way the fuck. Did. And they, they, they did that because they had nothing to say yeah. last year. They specifically said those are going to be next-gen games. Yep, they did say that last year. But the fact that they even brought them up when they had nothing to show for it is it was weird in the right. first place. We're going to jump over Microsoft a minute and go straight to EA. EA only had one game worth talking about, this Jedi Fallen Order. What were your I impressions I like how they had streams it? all day on Saturday, and the only thing we're talking about is the fact that Jedi Fallen Order has single play. And it looks an awful lot like a Jedi game. I'm actually decently excited for that. I'm so lukewarm on it. Yeah, I saw it, and I kind of went, okay, this looks like a game. Um, admittedly, it looks pretty. Dude, it more looks than like anything stuff. else, I don't care how it looks. The gameplay looks solid, but most importantly, it's being made by Respawn. And if you recall a little game they made called Titanfall 2, I am so down for the campaign in Jedi Fallen Order. I am there for the storyline of that game. I just saw that gameplay, and I was reminded of, like, a game from 15 years ago. Yes, it has a nice shiny coat of paint. Yes, it looks bright and the, the, it has like ray not ray tracing but it's got like all the bells and whistles you expect from a triple a game but i watched that and i was kind of like okay this looks this is going to be a four hour experience and i'm done with it i'm getting force unleashed vibes all over getting force unleashed while cool for one playthrough was not worth 60 bucks with how quick it was that's what this is ringing to me uh chat disagrees with me star wars uncharted no it looks great now, Star Wars Uncharted was going to be the game that Amy Henning was making that got fucking canceled. Well, what are you going to do? Also, I have so little faith in the Star Wars and Star Wars as an IP these days, and I have so little faith in EA. There's I nothing think at this here point, that excites me. A lot of people have Star Wars fatigue. We've had a movie like every year now for the last 800,000 years. A lot of them not good either. The only good of the, of the new movies, but again, the only good I ones are I'm holding out hope on Respawn. Respawn is the reason I'm, I'm on board. That if it if it was not respawn, I would not give two shits about this game. As it is, I give one. You give one shit. That is some solid fucking endorsement from Stephen Brown, yes. ladies and gentlemen. Anyways, let us <laughs> know what you think about Jedi Fallen or specifically down chat. I'm really curious to gauge what people's feelings. Also, about this if you're game all is. hopped up about um, Madden or FIFA or whatever the fuck LCA makes, you rushing the wrong show. Uh, all let's talk about Microsoft. <laughs> a, a, as an aside, real quick. Uh, I, I, I respect the people who love Madden and FIFA and all that. Those games are catered to a very specific audience. More power to you if you love those games. I feel it's like the people that love those me. games, really love those games, don't watch it. 
Yeah. It could, could be wrong. And if I'm wrong, let me know in the comments. I will happily not read those later. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move on to Microsoft for the last one here. Dude, Outer <laughs> Worlds. Let's go. Man, David, you are so loud today. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. I have a uh, long day. Outer Worlds. So it sounds like you liked the trailer. I did. I did not. I thought it was a bad trailer. Man, it looked boring. Uh, it looked very stiff. I kind of saw that and went, okay, this really isn't the way to sell this game to me. That said, it's not like the trailer has dampened my my feeling for the Outer Worlds. I'm still excited for it. I have faith it, in Respawn. It's, 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 it's Outer Worlds is not made Respawn, by Obsidian. Uh, Obsidian. The Sorry, that made Fallout New Vegas, which is the last good Fallout. Yes, exactly. Uh, Obs Obs hell, Obsidian did the first South Park game. Uh, the Dude, first South is, Park Stick of Truth. This game, is say. this is like a Fallout game set not in the Firefly universe, but in like an adjacent universe. <laughs> it's, it's like Firefly Fallout. Yeah, can't wait. Can't wait. So excited. You had Bleeding Edge. This is the new game from Ninja Theory. And unfortunately, I'm just going to go ahead and call this right now. This game is dead on arrival because it is a four versus four player arena looking game. And that's just a market no one is going to be into. No, dude. Uh, dead or Alive is a... Is a I know. Team. I knew <laughs> you were going to say that. Ooh. What do you think? I, I don't give that. Minecraft Dungeons is a game that exists apparently thanks microsoft for owning minecraft and making minecraft diablo that's what it I looks guess. like i want i want to take a closer look at this because i do like I a don't. good diablo game i really don't there are so many bad diablo games and there's so many games that look like minecraft and i'm sick of both i am done with that block style art but however i am not done with action rpgs i i am intrigued by it. It's not something I'm ever going to spend money on to play, but I do want to take a look at it. Path of Exile exists. I don't need anything else. We had the Blair Witch announced coming out August 30th. Now, this, now if you're asking, what the hell is relevance does Blair Witch have in today's day? Well, none. It's a very odd choice to make a game out of. However, it is a horror game being designed by Bloober Team, from what I can tell by the end. Bloober Team are the guys that brought you uh, Layers of Fear 1 and 2 and Observer, that sci science sci-fi cyberpunk oh horror oh, game right. that had Rutger Howard in it. I like Bloober Team. However, it's going to give you an idea of how this game is going to play, meaning no real gameplay at all. It's just going to be you going from weird-ass scene to weird-ass scene to weird-ass scene. Spooky with maybe walking some, simulator. Maybe some puzzles thrown in for good measure. If it follows the rest of Bloober Team's games. I do want to play it. Uh, I, I, I do like that company, but just know that's what you're getting into. This isn't going to be a horror game like Resident Evil or Silent Hill. It's going to be, like you said, David, a scary walking simulator, for lack yep. of a better word. Um, then we had the game shown off that I was already excited for. I'm already on board for this game. I was already planning on buying it. Cyberpunk had a new trailer. The trailer ends with like the main character in the trailer getting shot in the face, and then his like CPU reboots, and he's in the middle of nowhere. And there's this guy saying, wake up. We got a city to burn. Camera pans up slowly, slowly, slowly. And it's Keanu fucking Reeves. I, I and everyone loses their goddamn mind and then mm -hmm. continues to do so when Keanu goddamn Reeves walks on stage to start talking about cyberpunk. And that man is a goddamn delight. I don't care who you are. Yeah, he is really one of the greatest people of all time, it seems. Dude, uh, so good. They did not but, need to make like, this game any fucking cooler, and they did. Yeah, I was already 100% on board buying this game day one, regardless. And... Keanu's in it? Man, come on. However, come on. As I want Keanu the to be the guy that if you find a dog in the game, you rescue it and you bring it to Keanu. And so like, what What if what if he, John Berthanol's dog that was at the EA stage gets kidnapped and John Berthanol, Keanu Reeves, and the girl from the uh, <laughs> uh, Square Conference team up together to go, or not Square Conference, but the Bethesda Conference team up to hunt them down John Wick style? That'd be fun. I'd, anyway, I'd, I'd, I'd throw that game. Cyberpunk looks amazing. Can't wait to play it. I'm, um, I'm into yeah. Cyberpunk. One thing I want to mention, though. Keanu's a delight. Much... The your breathtaking moment, I think, is yeah. the e Highly moment memorable. from this year. One thing I want to mention, as with everything that seems to be this year, no fucking gameplay of Cyberpunk shown. None. I mean, we had that extended uh, behind-closed-doors gameplay reveal. Yeah, I mean, point, there is gameplay out there of it. We don't know how much of, of that it. is gameplay. There is gameplay of it out there, but man, it is just... Most importantly, this was dated for early next year. Yes, early, early uh, April something, right? Yep. April 21st. Yep. I was off by one month exactly, my prediction. 
not 21st, like 17th or something. It, it, Mid-April. I, I can't. I'm so excited. Moving on. Battletoads. It's back and looks fucking dumber than ever. <laughs> How about Legend of Wright? I, I'm into that. I, I want to play that. Okay. Yeah. You I like that rough. art book stuff. Uh, Double Fine got picked up by Microsoft, meaning that Tim Schafer might actually fucking release a full game without having to beg people for money or just abandoning it, looking Dude, at you, Broken Age, that, and Deep Space, Deep Space Let's talk about the fact that Psychonauts came out on Xbox a million years ago, then Microsoft dropped Double Fine, and Double Fine had to get their own funding to finish their games, and went on this long adventure of being an independent studio, and now that they're making Psychonauts 2, they're brought back by Microsoft. I didn't even think about that. That's funny. Weird, weirdly poetic that that Double Find has now gone full circle. They made all the games they were going to make as an independent. And now that they're working on Psychonauts 2, they're back to Microsoft. Right. I, I'm officially on the record of thinking that Tim Schafer is actually very overrated. I don't like most of his games, and I am still very, very salty over both the Broken Age. Here, we need to crown funding to fund Broken Age. Oh, we need more because we ran out of money for part two. And the whole space space df9 thing where they just went well you bought the game on the promise that we'll eventually finish it but fuck that it's not making money so kiss our ass i think that that tim schaefer is a delightful human oh and, i've got uh, nothing against him personally uh he's a, he seems super a, nice you met him at pax <laughs> yeah he's he's a delight he's i would great. like to have a beer with him but he is not he i he, would straight up get just drunk with that guy flat out drunk Great. He is just, I don't, I, I think he is one of those people who thinks too much about the creative side of games and not enough about the business side of games, and it bites him He's in the ass David over and Cage. over and over again. David He's Gage fine. ships complete games. Say what you will about him. David Gage can actually ship a game. All right. That's cool. Uh, let's talk about 12 Minutes. 12 Minutes is a video game. I'm fucking all, all in on this. It is a weird... Groundhoggy Day once again seemed to be kind of a theme at EA where you're trapped in this time loop. It's just like you and your wife or girlfriend. She's pregnant, and then this dude knocks on the door, and murders you, and then you start back up. It's uh, take a look at the trailer for it. I can't do it. I can't do an explanation justice for it in the short amount of time that we have left. All, All right, in uh, on this though. Really excited the, for it. One of the games that made me actually yell at my monitor when it came on screen. I'm. Uh, I have so many conflicting emotions. With this it's one of my favorite all-time favorite game franchises of all time and it's coming out six years later than it was supposed to fantasy star online 2 is finally fucking finally being released for western this game yep. has been in english for five years because it's released in certain markets that speak english already just never here I yeah. played this game on a Japanese server with an English patch for probably a month or two, and it was just annoying enough that I dropped it. This game looked gorgeous when it came out in 2012, but again, instead of releasing in the West in 2013 like they originally promised, it took them an additional six fucking years to get Fantasy Star Online 2 out to us. I'm probably still going to play it because I'm a damn sucker. So many love, people had love, to go through so many hoops Fantasy just to Star play this Online. in America. Yes, I was one of them. And then I just couldn't stand it anymore. I will be playing this game the day it comes. I might take a look at it. It's got too I, many people I just, who love this for me not to at least take a look I at it. I know I will. I'm an idiot, and I know I will. In that but vein I'm of... I'm also upset because this game is the free-to-play Fantasy Star game. This yeah. is their MMO. This is we're trying to hook you with, with Michael Transactions, and you're going to buy suits of armor or new costumes and wings and skins for your mag and all that other shit and i just don't care because i love the fantasy star game system. the one thing i was really hoping for from the nintendo direct was that they were going to say that they were going to actually hd remaster the gamecube fantasy star uh remix and bring it switch with local and online play because i would buy that yesterday with all of my money but i will settle for fantasy star online by my fair enough the web in the same tradition of bringing Eastern games west that have been over there, really big over there, we have Crossfire X. Now, this looked dumb to me and to everyone else I spoke about, but the Crossfire is fucking huge in the Southeast Asia market. Like, massive. It's, it's one of the like, biggest first-person shooters out there over there. It's got, like, 500 million players or more, something yeah, like that. Yeah, it's ridiculous. It's, like, a lot. Uh, they showed off Elden Ring. This is the From Software slash George Railroad Martin game. I have. They didn't show off anything. No. This, this they, teaser... They showed a, they showed a teaser. 
this teaser was on par with the original Sekiro teaser, which was like a picture of a porch for a couple of minutes. We have no information. Yeah. We know nothing about this game. It's going to run on the From Seft Onion engine. It's going to be penned by George R. R. Martin because obviously he has to do every fucking thing he can in his power to avoid just finishing his own goddamn <laughs> book. And it's it's weird because I should be over the moon for this. Right? There's not enough information for me to care. I, I just don't. We I, have I, a name. Yeah. The Elden Ring. Okay, cool. That means nothing to me without anything to back it up. Also, George R. R. Martin, as weird as it sounds, does not sell me this game even a little bit. No. Like, I'm probably less excited with him attached than I would be if it was just a new FromSoft game. I'm fine with him All attached. I know I'm not is less excited. It's just, eh. It's not Armored Core, so whatever. Fucking let's talk about their new console instead. Before that, they did show off Halo Infinite real quick, but once again, another CGI trailer, so... Who fucking cares? Now, let's get to Project Scarlet. What the fuck are you talking about? They ended with Halo Infinite, dumbass. They did that. That's I'm, I'm skipping it. I'm skipping ahead because I want I want to end up Project Scarlet because I'm going to go off on a giant fucking rant about it. And I don't want to go, oh, and they also showed Halo Infinite. Oh, okay. Well, it's still <laughs> called Project Show Scarlet. Show flow, which means David. That, that uh, since it's got a project name and not an actual name, they didn't announce anything. No. They announced the exact same amount of information, really that Sony did when they were talking about PlayStation 5. 120 FPS, 4K resolution, standard with a solid-state drive. Uh, I think they were talking about it potentially having GDDR6. Um, Important to note what they didn't say. Microsoft, remember the axiom. If a company thinks something is good news, they won't ever shut up about it. If they think it's bad news, they won't ever mention it. What they well, the did big thing not is, is say. That both Microsoft and Sony are terrified of being the first ones to say a price. That's not what I'm talking about. What they didn't say, which Microsoft is known to say over and over again, is that this is the most going to be the most powerful console out there. They didn't say that, which makes me think PlayStation Five is technically going to be more powerful than whatever Project Scarlet is going to be called. It's just, it'll come out when it comes out. It's it we is know. What it is. We know fuck all about this conference, and this is where my mini rant comes in. Microsoft, you guys had this E3 wrapped up. You were on the stage alone. Sony wasn't going to show up. You had an all right conference, but this point right here is your time to shine. You show the console off. You have this entire empty, vacuous space to your own you command the entire eyes of the internet and what do you do you show you do it do a little fucking developer scissor roll with a bunch of people talking about how awesome project scarlet is and give us nothing you don't even give us the name because it's not going to be called project scarlet in the end it's going to be called something else yeah it's going to be called something stupid as fuck too if we keep following their current naming you had the world at your fingertips and you fucking dropped the ball I understand mar- I understand this might not be ready. I understand that marketing is a bitch sometimes. I understand that you are worried about what Sony might do and Sony's worried about what you guys might do. It's in a real dance of who gets to blink first. I get all that. But this is such a missed opportunity. You guys could have at least shown the name, projected uh, uh, price maybe, maybe some more stats, something. Here's a, here's a tease of a game that's going to be running on Project Scarlet anything anything to build more buzz about what the fuck project scarlet is and instead you just give us like you did back when the xbox one was announced a video essentially people talking about fucking teraflops do you remember how dumb that was yeah they did most, it again most people watching the conference don't give a shit about that kind of stuff they that's, did it that's great for, that's great for guys and nerdy people like me that like hearing about teraflops because it's a funny word um, but most people don't even know what that means and don't give a shit. It was ex- it was such even, even a like the wasted crazy, opportunity. Even the crazy Microsoft fans I know weren't like, oh my god, Microsoft crushed it. The only thing I will say is their reveal of the PC Game Pass and the way all that shit works was well done. That's cool. Take a look at that, by the way. I think PC, that's going to be the, the future. The PC Game Pass is like 10 bucks, and you get access to everything on Game Pass. But most importantly, if you already have... Um, xbox live or whatever you can upgrade your account to the game pass ultimate which gives you the xbox game pass the pc game pass and xbox live and upgrading your account is a fucking dollar yeah and they like 
match the price because if you convert any remaining live gold and game pass months into ultimate punts or you can convert them one to one into ultimate pass for a dollar so people are buying gold cards like crazy right yeah it, it's a really cool idea what they're doing there uh inspect yeah. chat says he, they agree microsoft was very underwhelming that's coming from someone who has been down with xbox since the first one i don't hate xbox i never bought into the whole console where it's like oh fucking xbox is gonna rock sony or fucking xbox sucks sony forever i own them both fuck you i i, I look at the games i go where the game I goes i will never buy an well I mean, you actually, have no reason I've, to because they're I've putting all stuff on one. pc yeah but but that's cool because they're in a unique place because guess what i still have to shell for a copy of windows when i upgrade my computer right although i didn't most recently because i just called the person said hey fix my shit and they pretty cool the point is microsoft had an opportunity to deliver an alpha strike on sony out the gate they had Ooh, this battle tech logic i like they had this unique chance to strike hard strike first strike fast man you've been watching cobra kai <laughs> Not yet, but it is on the brain. <laughs> and they didn't. They let this chance slip through their fingers, and I think it's going to come bite them in the ass later. Because now Sony, who ne chose not to show up at E3, can who go... Who can be far more wet ready for this in November, and they could be like, hey, by the way, we're going to have a PSX. Yeah. Because while they don't have one Or on whatever Sony's right state of play is, they can just do one of those. They can they can just pop something out in November and be like, oh, by the way, now we have all the momentum because we didn't try and do anything at E3. No one was looking at us at all. No one's looking at Microsoft because Microsoft won't be right. And they could just drop of here's everything about the PS5. Right. By the way, it's 400 bucks. I don't think it's going to be 400. I'm convinced it's 499. I'm pretty sure it's going to be 499, but I'm also pretty sure that the Xbox will be. I missed that last part. I'm sorry. I think the Xbox will be worked. One more time, your mic's kind of cutting out there. You think the Xbox will be more expensive than the next Sony console? Okay, sorry, sorry. It's just you're, you once you get like halfway that sentence, the mic would just cut off. I can't That's fine. Going it's on late. There. My mic's not supposed to be on this long, don't you know? <laughs> then I'm I'm about out of scotch, so you know. Which means we should probably wrap things up. No new releases this week because Allison, nothing of real consequence was released, or the stuff that was released was the out now kind of style announcement. So it's already out. No point in going over it. With that, David, that is going to bring us to the end of the show. I want you guys, if you're watching us here, either at Twitch TV slash Game Points Live or later on YouTube at Game Points PC, let us know what you think. I specifically am very curious what you think about the Microsoft con uh, conference. Let us know in the comments down below or in the chat. Also, I would like to know your absolute favorite part and your least favorite part. What was the part you're like, oh, this again? And what's the one moment that got you to yell at your TV? Yeah, uh, I would like if to know any. that as well. And if you had none, and you were just whelmed the whole time, whelmed. That that's know. a good. That's a good. This E three was whelming, remarkably it whelming. It wasn't bad, but it wasn't good. It was just remarkably yeah. in the sense that I feel like I need to make a remark on how whelmed I am. Yeah. But yeah, I I I, I feel like Microsoft really blew a chance to just knock it out of the park, and I think it's going to bite them in the ass. But let me know what you guys think down below. Once again, though, thank you all for showing up. If you like yep. what you see here and you want to support the channel in any way, like, comment, subscribe. If you're sitting on Amazon or Twitch Prime subscription, I'd appreciate that here if you're at Twitch TV. But if you don't use it here, please use it somewhere. Give it to your favorite streamer. It does go to waste if you don't. If you want to yep. show, follow the show on Twitter, you can do so at GamePoints PC. You can follow myself, Steve Brett, at CapitalistPig21. You can follow David Smith there at Palshife underscore Satori. And yes, one guy on YouTube I did change. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to be part of the greater Game Points community as a whole, you can join our Discord server. The link is provided down below, regardless of where you happen to be watching us at. And, of course, we will be back next Monday at 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. We were a day late because of E3. Thank you all for showing up. This has been Game Points episode 178. And until next Damn. Monday... Yeah, we're getting up there. Until next Monday, we'll be seeing you. Good night.